Okay, Coach McGovern. I, you know what? I don't think I've ever interviewed anybody who's in like a stance. I like you're it. Ready to go. You're, yeah. Like Coach Ryan said, you got to be ready. You got to be right. constantly assessing, right? Yep. Yeah. Looking at the the C3 here, Compound College Combine. You guys are a D3 school. Mm -hmm. uh, how much do you guys gain from this as far as recruiting, and how does this benefit Dubuque? Well, this is prime time uh, for, for recruiting. These are the guys that are looking uh, to wrestle in college and they're starting early in August. They're at the National Coach Convention. I met you know, parents in here that have kids that are wrestling and they're interested. So you want to go when, when they're ready to make a decision. A lot of these kids are not ready to make a decision, but they're ready to look. And so all college coaches should come here, right? And so you want the kids to go where it's the best fit for them, whether it's their academics, their career, and their future, and their lives. So these are things that we should be supporting as college coaches. And actually for the wrestlers here, I'm finding a lot of good kids that work real hard. Uh, some of the kids that are leaders in the warm up and, and, and taking charge and just hard workers and they got positive energy and they love to, to suffer and, and grind. And, and, and they love the battle. And so you can see it in their faces. Those kids will go far because most kids aren't really ready for college to win a national title. It takes, it takes, some, it takes a love, it takes a passion, it takes work ethic and consistency. And so that's what you see here. And, and obviously you guys do a great job uh, with it and the energy you guys run in the camp do a great job. So, How much do you fight the battle of, you have a lot of kids who, who think they're Division One, they think they're Division Two, and then when they get there it's not their cup of tea. How much of that battle do you fight where you know someone probably should have come to Dubuque and they go elsewhere and, and it just doesn't work out for them. Do you fight that battle a lot? Uh, yeah, I don't think of it as a battle because I want kids to have a dream. I want them to be the best in the world. I want them to be Olympic gold medals. I don't want to lose that, that dream. At the same time, sometimes a Division three fit. I mean, we got guys on the Greco Olympic ladder with Rao, Jeff Rao, uh, Nazar, who is D3. So you, you can see that Division three guys. I was one. I was on the national team, top three. Um, and I feel like you just got to go where it's a good fit for you, where you feel like that coach really cares, knows you, and can help you reach your goals. And if you feel that way, um, you know, your highest level, I, I think, should be to, to be the best in the world. Um, but obviously, Division One's a marquee event, and that sells tickets, and that sells uh, legacies. And so I get it when kids want to do that. But no, Division Three has an opportunity for guys to excel at the highest level, and I think kids should look at that. But also, we're going to give you time to really make sure you can graduate here with academic honors and uh, look out for your future um, in life beyond the mat. We don't really have like any professional outlets, right? You know, like we have probably 20 athletes right now who maybe, maybe 20 guys are making over 70, 80 grand as being athletes. And that, that's a high number, I think. You're right. And so I don't think maybe you, you want to sell that, that uh, wrestlers are going to always make a living in wrestling, but but at the same time, you can't look around at this convention and say they can't. We got a lot of guys that turn into college coaches, high school coaches, club coaches, or their passion is still with the sport. They're making a lot of money as investors, lawyers, leaders in their communities, and they end up being back to the club, supporting the club coaches. And so wrestling, people can maybe make a difference and potentially make a living, but this is something that, that is good for America, it's good for building men, it's good for building women all across the board, so it's something that a lot of people can engage their whole life in and make an impact, make a difference, so when you say guys can't make a living, a lot of guys do this for a living and they love it, and I think that's something that we all can agree on that it's great for everybody to be involved in and it's helping America, not be the best in the world just in wrestling, but you know, it's some of our best leaders and for the communities. How much do you love it? You know, you've been in this for a long time, man. How much do you love and how passionate are you about the sport of wrestling? The, the longer I'm in it, the longer I appreciate all of our wrestling leaders and our coaches and the kids. My son's three years old now and I, I see... You have a three-year-old? Yeah, yeah, so... Holy yeah, smokes! Yeah, getting him going and uh, just, you know, for the future of him, just seeing the future of the sport evolve and and uh, so, you know, this is what I want him in to grow as a, as a man. And, and what Tom Ryan was talking about, you know, your achievements, not your identity. It can be chasing fool's gold. I always like to talk about, hey, man, wrestling's the gas. It's the passion. It's not you. You're the car. And it's not your destiny. you got to find out what success is, how you're going to measure it. So, you know, Tom talks about measuring yourself, you know, and, and how Christ, your identity in Christ. Uh, and I think a lot of our wrestlers then can get behind that. You see Kyle Snyder and our great wrestlers, and they're not afraid to go compete. Uh, and worry about what everybody else thinks. They're going to go out there and give it their best and and and, and, and give it the glory to God. And so I, I really believe that. Uh, yeah, how do you lose passion for that? I mean, as long as you're breathing and thanking God that you're alive, uh, you can stay passionate about uh, the great sport of wrestling that's in the Bible. It's a man's oldest and greatest sport. So how can you not get fired up about it? What's your favorite thing about the convention? Working with other coaches? Uh, just the constant, the camaraderie, the fellowship. Uh, 
and uh, just the relationships, obviously, and, 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 and knowing that these guys are making a difference in this world. These are the leaders in the community, and uh, they're trying to do what I do, so I respect, I respect that, man. I love these guys. And obviously, when we get on a mat, we sharpen each other, but yeah, so, <laughs> so it's like a family reunion. All right. Yeah. We got more kids. They're doing some scrapping. Kids are going to start talking to coaches. You got anything else for me? I'm going to let you get back in there. You got anything else for me? Just thanks for holistness and the energy you bring, and uh, you know Tom Ryan in there made people want to wrestle, and, and and that's what we want. We want people that we just want to get people excited about wrestling and growing this sport. Hey, thanks for the time. Good luck for you. Hopefully, you guys snag some recruits. Yeah, thanks.